15th of June and we're still in the Atlantic. And look what you've got. What are you doing? Breaking the boat. Don't. Are you going to tether on? Yes. Oh, yes, tether on. Oh, don't break the boat. Why is he breaking it? Do you know, Harry? Because last time we crossed the Atlantic, uh, Maui, what? I'm there. Right. Uh, so we go. Right. Oh, did we lose it? Nope. Oh, okay. What's wrong with it? That's not good. It's not good. Okay. Bad for you. days are we up no right? idea you don't have any idea you just told me before how many hours you literally know how many hours until we get there yes uh, I don't know how many days we've been at sea I asked you how long till we get there uh, 30 hours 25 hours it jumps up and down as long as the breeze stays right yeah as long as, breeze stays. As, long as we can keep Frankie up as long as we can keep Frankie so Shane just put this in the other day. It's cleat, so now we can cleat off our barber hauler. Just bring the clue of Frankie down a bit. We can trim it correctly. This is why I love your dad, Ollie. 40, 40 nautical miles out from the Azores after crossing from St. Martin and we're measuring up for potentially new, well, a new jib. And, but not only that, let's just modify the boat so we can bring the clue down and sheet from a different place completely. Is that why you like it? Wow, well, it's never a dull moment, is there? So where are you going to sheet from? Because at the moment we sheet back here where Ollie is. Yeah. We have our little tweaker that you set up. Oh, that's for outboard sheeting. For outboard sheeting. Is this so you don't have to sheet inboard? Or is this something else entirely? This is... Totally different setup. So I have to pick that up. Marley in here for the window. Yeah. The, the structural piece of the cab top here. Yeah. I'm thinking of putting in a watch track on here. Oh, okay. With a floating ring. Right. So we can sheet to bring the clue of the sail right down to here. And that way we'd only have to in all up the jib. And then... Well, would you? Because if it's on the... 
because a track that goes that way you wouldn't have to inhaul it at all would you no exactly okay so that, well that track would be pin stopped right for the inboard outboard right and then we'd have the floating ring going up and down yeah to control the twist and the leech and then as we cracked off then we'd only need the the outboard so we'd still keep this yeah possibly back there, make though? it a little bit more um, no, it'd probably it'd end up be... with a permanent pad eye here. Okay. That would then go back to a... Uh, back to there. But we'd end up probably needing a post inside. Right. But yeah, to get from here back to there, it's like, uh, how do I go? Yeah, because you've got to go over that. Which is sort of like... That was the thing that we didn't like about that TS, was the geometry of the... Jib sheeting. Jib, yeah. Because that's a nice thing about what you've done with Pikea is that at the moment everything's very free, all runs very easily. Yeah. And there's not a lot of load or resistance on anything. So at the moment you can see it's quite nice to be able to front the jib to the pulley block to the wheel. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's why that's why it works. It's simple. It works. Free running. Good to is put like a uh, drill a hole through the cabin top and put like oh, a yeah. tube through there. Yeah. Um, but then how does that work when you're easing and That's fine. Moving it in. Through the floating ring here. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Rather than going over it goes through it. Yeah. Then it's going to go through that floating ring and then when we're shooting it outboard unfortunately it's going to go through that ring that ring will want to pull as far as it can then 90 degrees out here then up to the sail so that's going to be a bit ugly ugly uh yeah Made it. That's Payal, the headlander hoarder. When went completely dropped out, and then out. Fourteen the days from one side to the other. Absolute stunning evening to be arriving in the Azores. And it is cold. Yeah, it's bloody cold. <laughs> After being in the Caribbean, get a bit of this stuff. Yeah. Go and walk out that volcano tomorrow. Then. Oh, yeah, look, there's Pico. Go and see that volcano in a couple of days' time. My overexcited crew got overexcited and Bob the sails down a little bit early. <laughs> it's took about eight miles to go.